Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Digital Front Door. I'm Scott Benedict. You know, in the early days of e-commerce, one of the, the roadblocks that were faced by digital merchants was the challenge of selling a product that a consumer did not have right in front of them, a product they couldn't touch, they couldn't feel, they couldn't hold in their hands. To help address uh, this challenge, online retailers created product ratings and reviews right there on a product detail page that provided the shopper with a kind of an easy understanding of a one to five star rating, as well as the ability for shoppers to see comments and thoughts from people who had purchased that product previously and shared their ratings, their experiences uh, about that product and made that information available for shoppers who came after them to kind of get their thoughts, their feelings on the product that they had purchased as other consumers were considering purchasing that product. If you fast forward to today, and ratings or reviews are just one aspect of shopper feedback that now is contained in the context of what we refer to as user-generated content. And the importance of UGC, that's the acronym for user-generated content, really plays a critical role and provides an underutilized feedback engine from consumers that is truly valuable to shoppers, to retailers, and to consumer brands alike. And so joining me today for conversation on this topic is my good friend, Andy Wilson. Andy, welcome. And it's so so nice for us to kind of have a, a conversation on a topic related to omni-channel retail, and, and I know this is an area you're interested in just as much as I am. So, Well, Scott, first of all, uh, it's great to be with you. And I'm glad to have and, you. Yeah, you know, we sort of switched chairs today. <laughs> uh, you know, normally I'm interviewing, and now, and now I get to uh, uh, participate. Yeah. But, you know, Scott, first of all, you're right. This, this topic is critical. Yeah. And I think one of the things we're going to do with this topic today is that we're gonna we're gonna really give you specificity around how do you do this? Yeah. How how do you how do you understand more about Omni Channel? It's here to stay. Yeah. It's how we're running our business today, as you said, and we're gonna get deep into that. One of the things I I um, want our audience to really understand, though, Scott, is your background. Mm-hmm. You know, Scott comes from years and years of experience in retail. Mm-hmm. And we worked together at Walmart. Sam, uh, uh, Scott was a, a long-term at Sam's. Yeah. Uh, prior to Walmart and Sam's, he was in a host of other retail companies. And uh, then you know he, he said, okay, I'm going to do all this retail from buying and from memberships and all of that. Now I'm going to go to a technology company, an analytical company, mm-hmm. White Spider. And you yeah. spent several years there yes. in White Spider. And now, Scott, you're, you're, what you're doing today with Benedict Enterprises and all that you have your hands into yeah. is exciting. It is. It's like it's sort of like me. Why you know we don't ever quit, do we? <laughs> no. No. You know because we enjoy retail. And I think the thing we enjoy most is the change. Yes. And because it gets better for the consumer mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. And what Scott and I are going to dive deep into is he uh, he's already said today is is around this u- user generated uh, content. Yeah. So let's buckle up here <laughs> let's get into it absolutely and, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask scott uh some questions yeah and and then um i think you'll find this very interesting very informative and it's something you can take to your team and do the same thing that we're going to do absolutely right absolutely I, i'm thrilled to talk about it because it's it's probably an aspect of of Omnichannel retail, and people really think of it, Andy, as just part of online. But I think, as you see, as the conversation unfolds, it impacts in-store retail as well as online retail, and that's why it's right. such an important topic. I felt like we needed to talk about. Well, it is, and so here we go. So my, so let's just start off with this and get deep into it. Yeah. As I said earlier, you know, so, uh, Scott is such a subject matter expert in this area. And uh, so we're going to just deem some of this knowledge today. But as you were talking about user-generated content, 
So talk about why that's so valuable. Yeah. Why, why is that so valuable? Well, it, it's a couple of things. Uh, as I mentioned at the opening, it was a way for consumers to understand more about a product that they couldn't hold right in front of them, that they couldn't see on a shelf or display like they could in a, in a physical store. And that was really the, the, the beginning of, of its value. But over the course of time, it kind of unfolded that it had broader impact in the online shopping experience by uh, creating SEO, creating value uh, in how search engines would tend to look for items, one that had more ratings and reviews, and two that obviously had higher or more mm -hmm. positive ratings or reviews, and put those towards the top of search results when the when a shopper was searching on a on a non branded term, they were looking for a particular eye of bottles of water or whatever that might right. that might be. But I, I will tell you through my lens as a former buyer and being someone that in that role I interacted with a lot of product managers, the role that UGC plays in in informing decisions not only about the product that's on the shelf or on the digital shelf today. Mm -hmm. But in informing decisions about mm -hmm. products in the future, that's the real unlock. The real opportunity is you know, if you ever watch Mad Men or, or, or these kind of old school ad agency uh, 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 depictions, you know, focus groups was a, a way that a lot of right. people would get consumer feedback about mm -hmm. a product or an idea about mm -hmm. a future product. And that was maybe a room of a, of a few people that they selected. Well, imagine if you could have thousands upon thousands right. of people who had actually bought and used that product and get their feedback and right. get it in mass. And oh, by the way, get it in a very efficient way that didn't mm -hmm. cost you a dime. Right. That's, I think, the part of the unlocked power or underutilized power, I guess yeah. I should say of UGC is it provides feedback to the buyer and to the, 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 to the brand owner, to the product manager to say, this is what people liked, this is what they didn't like, and literally you get to hear the voice of the consumer through UGC and right. what they think about the product. Well, you know, you, you talk, you know, we were talking about the value from the customer, yeah. the stakeholder. Yeah. So talk about that. What you know the the value uh, because basically um, companies are getting better and better at this. Yes, and you're right. You should have had to you had to have some type of uh, uh, focus group. Yeah. Or and in fact, I just read uh, yesterday. I think Walmart is even going to and Sam's is even going to do some of the focus groups with customers around yes. products. So it's not either or. Yeah, I guess it's, no. It's it's, it's, it's both. All right? feedback is is certainly valuable, Andy, and that, and I think that that's it. But to a shopper, I think shoppers really seek authenticity when they're comparing one product to another. Yeah. And it's one thing to hear the message of the person who who made the product, the brand owner. It's another thing to hear from your fellow consumers right. about, hey, I bought this product, I've used this product, and here's how I really feel about it, my unfiltered yeah. feedback. To, so to shoppers, yeah. it's got an incredible value there. To retailers, it obviously informs uh, you know their decisions about not only what to carry, right. but how to market it. And, and I will tell you, there's real marketing value both to the retailer and to the brand owner of pulling in the comments of real consumers who have used the products and say, you know, don't believe our message. Yeah. This is what somebody who's owned this product has said. Right. That's that's where the authenticity uh, of their feedback uh, is really valuable. It's really, it's a, you know, if you think in the context of online retail, it's a conversion driver. If someone can see this is what somebody else right. has bought this product thinks, your likelihood to click that buy button goes, goes way, way up. And in many cases, you'll see in just in pure uh, uh, measurable uh, metrics that the average order size, the number of items in a basket, in the average order value or the dollars in a shopping basket will statistically, they'll tend to go up 
when consumers interact with user generated content because once again it gives them a confidence, a feeling of confidence that this mm-hmm. this purchase decision that I'm contemplating, I feel good about it because I've seen what others who have bought this product right. think about it. You know, Scott, since you and I started talking about this topic, yeah. here's what I noticed. Okay. Yeah. In my shopping habits, mm-hmm. here's what I noticed. I noticed that uh, I'm paying more attention today mm-hmm. yeah. to what the customer says about the product yes. and how they rate the product. Yes. And 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 because number one, I trust that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm paying more attention today than ever. Right. Than ever. Yes. Uh, about my decision on purchasing. Yeah. Is what you're talking about. Yeah. So that's no. I mean, that's so critical. The second thing. That I really like what Amazon does mm-hmm. is that they will send me a question from a customer mm-hmm. about a product. Yeah. And I answer every one of those. Yes. Because I flip that if I have that same question, I wanna I, yeah. I wanna answer and I'm getting it. I'm not I'm not I'm not getting something that that's made up. Yes. Or that's come from Apple. It's the voice of a, right. a of an actual consumer. Exactly. Right. And I was thinking about how powerful that is yeah. to me as a consumer in this in, in, right. in this position and a customer yeah. on my decision making. So you're so right. If retailers, sellers are missing this, yeah. they're missing a huge Huge opportunity. I, I agree, and I, I should probably mention as you talk about you. You mentioned the the, the questions and answers. It, I, I mentioned at the top that user generated content historically is thought about as as just ratings or reviews, mm-hmm. and it is that. But it's it's more than that. Many websites and Walmart.com and SamsClub.com are among them mm-hmm. allow for questions and answers. A mm-hmm. consumer who's contemplating mm-hmm. buying a product can ask a question, and either the brand owner can answer it, mm-hmm. the retailer can answer it, or the community, other shoppers, right. if they have, have had an experience right. with the product, they can answer it, and those question and answers are part of what is now considered user-generated content as well. But then the other thing that's kind of neat is most websites also allow you to either upload a picture of of the product or post videos of the product. Uh, Say it's a food item and you wanted to show it prepared or it was a product that sits on the shelf in a box and it's not assembled and you want to mm-hmm. take a photo of this is this is what it looked like when it was assembled and mm-hmm. oh, oh the instructions were wonderful it was easy to put together user generated content really encapsulates all of those things so it's bigger than just ratings reviews and you right. mentioned the ability to ask questions and that's that's now one of the more recent in the last few years right aspect that's part of this umbrella of what we call UGC. You know, it, that's why I'm so excited about it. this is why, this is why you and I will just will work forever probably because mm-hmm. this this retail space, yeah. this omni channel space mm-hmm. is only gonna get better Indeed. with more information. Indeed. As we said at the top of the show you know, there's something else too that I that I think that's in this. You know, can can um, user generated content data? Have, again, we talked about a bit around use across retailer sites. Yeah. Is there anything else in uh, that comes to your mind about that? And and then the question I have: I'm part of some groups. Yeah two out there i'm a cyclist so i'm you know i'm part of a shrimp group but i was trying to have a tech and my bike it's a trek so i'm part yeah. of a trek right is that all the same is that how does that integrate it uh, all well that? one those are different uh aspects of the same thing and in, in, in many cases it could be about a product or it could be about a service uh uh or, or it could be even about a retailer uh, uh that so it takes many forms. We obviously, uh, as retailers or as people who grew up in retail, and the first thing you think of is is, is a product yeah. uh, on on an item page, but it, it, it's it's bigger than that mm-hmm. uh, to incorporate all those those other things. Uh, and so, it really can can be used in a lot of, of mm-hmm. different ways. And you, and you'll see that there'll be ratings reviews of stores. There'll be ratings reviews of service providers or of 
mm-hmm. you know, auto uh, repair shops or, or HVAC people. So UGC takes a lot of forms beyond what we typically think of as just uh, mm-hmm. a, a product at a, on a retail shelf. That's probably the biggest part, but it, yeah. it, it, it comes to life in a lot of different ways. So what, in your opinion, and I know you study this deeply, and you've done a lot of research. Uh-huh. Uh, so, but what is some of the most critical aspects of this? Well, uh, where, where you say, well, what would you yeah. tell our audience? This is critical. Yeah, the, the biggest thing uh, can be summed up in one word: authenticity. Mm-hmm. And here's what I mean when, when I say that: in the early days of of e-commerce and omni-channel, there was. Uh, examples and Amazon kind of suffered through a little bit of this as they were pioneering this the, this aspect of online retail. Uh, the concept of fake reviews, where people right. were putting reviews, uh, either good reviews on their own product if they were a product manufacturer, or placing bad reviews on a competitor's product to try and mm-hmm. pull down their performance. There was even examples of people being paid to write reviews, whether they had any uh, involvement in the product uh, as well. And so rightfully, online retailers have put in place guardrails to make sure that if you're writing a review, it's for something you purchase, Mm -hmm. one. Uh, And two, uh, the FTC and others have put in rules Mm -hmm. and and, and, and sort of some real uh, uh, guidelines to make sure that if you get caught publishing uh, fake reviews or inauthentic yeah. reviews. There's there's some pain involved. There's yeah. fines. There's mm-hmm. things like that that kind of put some guardrails around the use of UGC mm-hmm. that now have meant to safeguard its authenticity because as a consumer, if you can't trust that what you're reading is in fact an actual review from someone who's actually had an experience mm-hmm. of the product, the whole value of that and quite frankly your trust in the retailer. Right. Is gone. Right. You know, once once it's gone, you can't get it back. So, some of those early pain points have been addressed both by regulation mm-hmm. and by guardrails that retailers have put in place. But authenticity is the one word that is critical to this being the true value for all parties mm-hmm. that it, that it really has the potential to be. Right. Well, we live in a we live in that's wonderful. We live in a, a area. Where there's thousands of brands, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, Northwest Arkansas, uh, there's thousands. Yes. Okay. Yes. And as they seem to be growing daily here, and, <laughs> and when you you drive around our area, it's this. This is how I describe to my friends: is that when you open up your cabinet doors, your pantry, or whatever, <laughs> in your home, and you see all the brands, but they're here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're all here, yeah. and in Northwest Arkansas, and it's exciting to live in this area because. They have they bring such diversity to this area. Indeed. So think about those brands. Yep. And think about all the brands in your cabinet yep. in your home uh, that you dealt with sometime today, probably. <laughs> um, what can they do? Sure. Because to me, I see a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Not only the retailer that you yeah. talk so well about. Yeah. But I see a lot of those responsibility in the brands. Indeed, there is. So uh, I think there's a couple of things that they can do both brands on their own and in partnership with their retail partners. One is to maximize the value of UGC, getting the review count up, getting as many reviews and recency, more you know, more frequent reviews, re- reviews being constantly added to that page uh, is, is critical. And, and there's ways that you can accomplish that. One is through what is called review syndication, where let's say you're a brand owner and you have your own mm-hmm. direct to consumer website and you collect reviews mm-hmm. on that website. The technology exists that you can then syndicate those reviews out to your retail partners and they can appear on that item's detail page on the, on the retailer's mm-hmm. website in addition to your, your own. So you can take reviews gathered one place and syndicate them so long as it's the exact same item yeah. uh, onto other retailer websites. The other thing is obviously if a product is brand new to the market and not that many consumers have, have experienced mm-hmm. and had, had an experience with it, there's a practice called product sampling where you can actually put samples of that product into the hands of the consumer 
um, for free and say, hey, we'd like you to try this. The only thing we ask in return is, is write a review. Tell us what you think. Mm -hmm. And many people think, well, that's, that's a great way to get great reviews. Well, sometimes you may get challenger reviews right. back, but you want, you'd rather hear that right. early on and making the adjustments mm -hmm. to the product or the packaging or mm -hmm. perhaps the instructions if it's a product that has to be put mm -hmm. together or assembled. But product sampling is a way to, uh, to, to kind of get mm -hmm. the review count up early in a product's life cycle, mm -hmm. perhaps right after it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's introduced. And then we mentioned earlier the, the whole questions and ask, answers aspect. One of the things I don't see brand owners do as often as they can is to, to really assign a member of their team to monitor the questions that are coming onto their products mm -hmm. detail page on retailer websites and responding to that. Mm -hmm. And there's an opportunity to engage a consumer in a conversation, answer any questions mm -hmm. they have, and really provide customer service on a on a broader scale in a very efficient way by kind of monitoring the questions that are coming in mm -hmm. and then respond to them or respond to ready answer reviews and you can do that on walmart.com and samsclub.com as well mm -hmm. and keep the conversation going and just assign a body assigning someone yeah. to be responsible for that that interaction through ugc mm -hmm is incredibly valuable because you'll you'll really harness the whole business value out of the UGC content if you if you mm -hmm. practice that engagement and you put a little bit of resource behind it. Uh, that's awesome. So brands have a tremendous responsibility yeah. for that. So for, for so let's flip it again. Let's flip it back to the retailer. Sure. What it, what how do they maximize yeah. this? Well, a couple things. One there's a practice called moderation, which is to monitor reviews before they go up and go live on the site to make sure that they are, in fact, authentic mm -hmm. to the to the, the topic I, I said earlier, that they don't in, uh, you know in, contain any inappropriate <laughs> words or language or that right. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That to confirm that they are, in fact, a review of that product, not some other extraneous content. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not talking about a competitor or about somebody else's product, but yeah. talking about that product that's, you know, before that appears on that product's detail page, mm -hmm. you want to make sure it's an authentic review. Um, also, uh, many retailers uh, use a practice called the post-interaction email, or the acronym is PI, and what a PI is, uh, is once a consumer purchases a product, after a preset amount of time, uh, an email is auto-generated out to them to say, hey, we noticed that you bought product X. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear your feedback mm -hmm. on that. So in other words, instead of waiting and hoping mm -hmm. that a consumer will give you their feedback on the item, ask for it. Mm -hmm. Go out and proactively ask it. And what's neat is, is not only do you get that, uh, that feedback on the item mm -hmm. through that post-interaction email, but in many cases that brings someone back to your website for another visit and mm -hmm. potentially they could go shop for other products while they're there because you kind of compelled them to go onto the website to offer the, mm -hmm. the review. Uh, one of the other things that I've seen Walmart and Sam's Club really lean into this, and I'm so proud to, to see this, is they aren't just asking for reviews for product that were bought online. They're now asking for reviews for product that was purchased in a, in a store. And I get these these emails all the time mm -hmm. said we know she bought this item in the store would you give us a review mm -hmm. and, and and rate this product and tell us what you think and that's uh i think if you look across the whole retail community not enough retailers are are doing that you can also look at the uh, the left hand navigation on a website and there's many boxes you can check or uncheck that filter the the, mm -hmm. the, the, the product results you're looking at. One of those facets should be ratings. So in other words, mm -hmm. I just want to look at five-star rated products mm -hmm. or four-star rated products. And I want to filter out mm -hmm. the products with bad reviews. If mm -hmm. you're a retailer and you haven't put that functionality on your, mm -hmm. on, on your website, then I think you're missing an opportunity to help guide the consumer towards products that are highly rated and other shoppers have, have really stood behind it. And the last thing I'll tell you is many retailers, and Walmart and Sam's do this, uh, have their search engine algorithm tuned 
to be more likely to show you a product with a high rating than a product with a low rating. Mm -hmm. So you put a search term in the search box, mm -hmm. they're going to be more likely to show you the products with better ratings that fit that item or that description, mm -hmm. that term, than the lower ones. And that's just, obviously, that's a, that's a great customer experience is, is let us show you the things that other people like, not the... The sure. things that people don't like. So, right. a retailer, those are just some of the things right. that you can do to kind of leverage the value of this of this content. I like that. You know, um, one of the things as we have been navigating this conversation today, you know, uh, the thought that comes to me is the consumer, the shopper. Yeah, you're really in the driver's seat here. Yes, you really are. You yes. don't have a lot of power. Yeah. And you should have. Yes. Because you're the person purchasing the item, using the item, or whatever how, whatever the item is. Yeah. So we probably have more, as a consumer today, uh, more power, if you will, yeah. if I say so, yes. uh, influence mm -hmm. than we've ever had. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. It, and now we have ways that Scott is teaching us how to, how to do this. So as, as we've talked today uh, already... But as you think uh, begin about the retailer, how can this really help them? Uh, you know, if the, all the things you've mentioned. If retailers do that really well, yeah. listen to the customer. You know, Sam Walton used to tell us all the time, "Listen yeah. to our customer," and yeah. we we walk the stores and listen to our talk to our customers. Now, I think you still should do that. You should <laughs> if you're a retailer. This is now an add on That's right. to yeah. that experience. That's of right. Going out and talking to consumers yeah. one on one, and it's wonderful yeah. Yeah. To, to have that face to face conversation. Yeah. But then you could complement that exactly with the feedback of hundreds and thousands of yeah. people who have bought item X, and to hear their thoughts. Mm -hmm. That just builds upon it. And, mm -hmm. and to come to answer your question, Andy, is is that I still don't feel like uh, both brands and retailers really spend the, spend the time right. diving into UGC content and looking not only in the big picture for mm -hmm. how was this product rated? It was a four mm -hmm. point X number of yeah. stars. Yeah, that's the top line. That's the headline piece. Yeah. But you can actually, uh, through a lot of the tools that are available, do what's called text mining and look for terms or comments within the, the, the content mm -hmm. and look for common themes in terms of feedback. And I'll tell you a very, very quick story. My friends at Bazaar Voice, which is one of the companies right. that manages UGC for a number of retailers, right. including Walmart and Sam's Club, um, they taught me this story once when I managed this part of the business for Sam's Club.com. And they said, Scott, we have examples where a buyer in uh, in the intention to get to a lower price point, worked with the supplier and took some of the features and some of the, the capabilities out of a product to get to a lower price point. They reintroduced that item and the ratings and the reviews were awful. Mm -hmm. And when they went in to the, to the reviews, they found that in order to get to that lower price point, they had de-featured or lowered the quality of some aspects mm -hmm. of the product. I think it was a trampoline, actually, you know, those yeah. outdoor mm -hmm. trampolines. And they, you know, buyers were always trying to get to a, a better price. And, right. and, and on the surface, you can't fault them for that. But yeah. what the consumer told the retailer and the manufacturer is, is you took too much out of this product. The mm -hmm. quality is not where it used to be. The product is fading, mm -hmm. you know, being outside. Uh, in the case of a trampoline, it spends yeah. its life in the backyard in most yeah. cases. And not only were there returns going up for this product, more people were bringing it back. But if you go through and you harness that readings or reviews data, you kind of learn, okay, we, we de-featured this product too much. Mm -hmm. And and they, they pulled, in this example, they pulled that product off the, off the market and they went back to the to the better quality mm -hmm. product that quite frankly stayed sold mm -hmm. people were happier happier with it over the course of time it was more highly rated but it informed decisions both on the part of the buyer mm -hmm. the retailer and the brand owner uh, the manufacturer to say the the consumer has told us not one consumer mm -hmm. but hundreds and thousands of them have said this is what we think of your product. And they then they took action 
and use that consumer feedback to build back a better product that actually was was better received right. in the marketplace because right. they went in mm-hmm. and they really studied that feedback and understood what the consumer was telling them. That's that's yeah. part of the power here. It is. It's, it's great. So how can how can then you know brand ma- marketers leverage all this content uh, and how you know and then how does this really help retailers? Yeah, right. Talk through if you do the things you've talked about. Yeah. Then what's what happens? What what can really happen here? Well, there's a couple of things. One, you can use the consumer's voice, the consumer's feedback in more places than just on that product detail page or on the website. You can use it in in marketing, and, and we've seen a lot of cases where in promotional emails or in social media posts where Mm. here's the product or maybe here's the consumer's picture of them using it and enjoying the product and here's what they they said about it here's the ratings and here's the review Mm -hmm. and what they said Mm -hmm. again it it's such powerful marketing value to hear not what the brand said about their product, but what other consumers said yeah. about the product. So it's underutilized as a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly if you've got a great rating and a great review, shout that, tell yeah. that story, and tell it through multiple touch points with the consumer, not just on the product uh, 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 detail page. And then, uh, obviously, we, we talked about you know use it to inform future product decisions, mm-hmm. whether you're the buyer, or the retailer, or, or the mm-hmm. consumer. Uh, but just uh, you know, use it to kind of tell the story through multiple touch points mm-hmm. on this is what people who have actually experienced this product mm-hmm. think about it. You know, as as I was listening to you this morning, you know, as we visited a prior, prior to our, uh, our prior our time here, yeah. One of the things I, I realize is that um, this is extremely broad. Yes, um, I I I work with a, um, I'm on board with uh, three other company three companies and none of them are retail. Yeah. Uh, well, one's retail and, and two are not. Uh, so what I started thinking about mm-hmm. and 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 is that how this works beyond retail. It does. So talk to us about uh, these companies. Should they have some type of strategy? Broad, let's take let's take this big broad view yeah. of it yeah. and for our guests and talk to us about how how that would work. Well, uh, first of all, there's a, there's a couple of things. Is you know it, it started out as a way to drive sales online for when consumers were interacting mm-hmm. with a product or a brand mm-hmm. online. And it obviously is that, mm-hmm. but you can use it in other touch points. I mentioned you can use it in in marketing, in, in social media marketing, in uh, email marketing. You can use it in print or broadcast uh uh, media and it just reinforces your brand image mm-hmm. and your brand uh, 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 perception in the marketplace. And I see, uh, particularly in the sporting goods industry, maybe is a, is a good example where outdoor retailers like REI and some of those folks that are really focused on outdoor, they will pull in the voice of the consumer that they've gained through UGC, and it could be about a product, could be about a brand, it could be even about them as a retailer. They use that consumer feedback as kind of uh, a cornerstone of their marketing strategy, of their brand strategy. Mm-hmm. And it's like, don't let us tell you who who we are. Let our customers tell you who we are. And listen and hear their voice. Mm-hmm. Don't just believe what we tell you. Mm-hmm. Not see what other consumers say, and help to kind of define their brand through the eyes mm-hmm. of the customer mm-hmm. instead of what they say. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one thing for me to say who I am. It's another thing for my customers to mm-hmm. say who I am and who would you believe first. Something who's objective, or mm-hmm. or me who's trying to tell you what you know, try and boost my own message. There's nothing more powerful than that authentic voice of the consumer, whether it's a company's brand, a, a, a 
particular product brand or an individual specific mm-hmm. product or service. So that, I think that's the unlock that's underutilized is we live in an age where you can garner so much of this authentic feedback mm-hmm. and use it in so many ways. And even though UGC is not a, a new thing, is unbelievably underutilized as a marketing and brand message, not just for product, but for brands, for re- for retailers. Uh, and that's, that's I think, the shame is, is we haven't completely captured all the value out of it. Right. Well, you know, this has been so informative. And, you know, Scott, you have so much in-depth knowledge here. And I, I really I re- I have really enjoyed our time together uh, today. And um, it's, um, it's, first of all, I want to thank you for all you do at doing business in Bentonville. Yeah. And I appreciate our friendship and so much. That's and um, I, I really enjoy this. And this has been great mm-hmm. because I've learned a lot. Yeah. And I know what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be more intentional mm-hmm. and uh, in my voice mm-hmm. to uh, the retailers, to uh, you know, on the on products and services, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I know uh, I recently was uh, on a trip at a, a particular airline, and they wrote me, you know, how was my time? How yeah. was my trip? And they asked me to write, and I did. Yeah. And you know, I got a call. Mm-hmm. I thought I wasted my time. <laughs> I really did. Yeah. This airline, they don't listen to me. Yeah. They, I actually got a call mm-hmm. from from person that works in that area, in the customer service area, because yeah. they wanted to ask me even a more specific question yeah. about a comment I made. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't necessarily a negative comment, but it was a comment I recommended something. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to know more about that. Yes. And you know what that made me feel... I tell you what I did. I will fly their airline probably more now yes. because they're concerned about the consumer. They showed an interest in that's your right. perspective, Andy. That's and, that's powerful stuff. And so I think what, what you're, I know what you're telling our, our viewers today is you have a, you have a strong voice. Mm-hmm. The consumer has a strong voice. Indeed they you do. need to listen and engage with that. That's what I'm. That's what I hear you're saying today, and you have shared ways to do that. Yes, yes, that's excellent. So thank you uh, so much for our time to get together today. It's been great, My pleasure. definitely great for me. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. All right. Well, thanks, Andy. I've I've really enjoyed it, and I, I I'm glad to have people uh, listening on this episode of the the Digital Front Door. Again, I'm Scott Benedict. This is my friend Andy Wilson. Thanks for listening in. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.